Hey folks, welcome to the fourth episode of the Dialogue Project. I am Aditya Bhatia, along with my friends Dhere Dedia and Akash Junarkar. Today we have with us Manan Thakkar, an alumnus of Hindu College at Delhi University. He is currently pursuing Masters in Economics at the Columbia University in New York, USA. So without wasting any time, let us get started. Over to you, Akash. Thanks, Aditya. Uh, so hi, Manan. Thanks for joining us here today. Uh, let's start with the question: Which extracurricular activities uh, did you take uh, part in, or which internships did you pursue prior to your application? Um, definitely. Okay. So uh, first, talking about the internship, I applied through a formal channel on their website, and I actually got through. It was at for policy research, and it, I mean the mentors I got over there. Uh, to be honest, it's been like three plus years, and I'm still in touch with them, and they're super helpful. Super helpful. And, we got to work with the uh, International Policy Research Institute based out of Washington DC and I got my first international paper out at my just second internship so that turned out to be a lucky one and yeah CPR then I did it at Observer Research Foundation it's also based out of Delhi and it was a decent internship but I guess Center for Policy Research and the paper there helped me a lot and uh, apart from that, in terms of extracurricular activities, mm-hmm. I was the vice president of the entrepreneurship cell in Hindu College. Then, uh, so Hindu College, like when I was a part of it, we won the National Entrepreneurship Challenge for India. And it was held at IIT Bombay. So that was one of the things I did. And towards the end of my term at Hindu College, I was also one of the founding members of the mentorship club. So basically, mentorship club was uh, like we. Students as juniors lack the kind of guidance we need from the seniors, senior year students. To fill that gap, we started mm-hmm. this club where we t- took around 10 kids who were interested, all of us, 10 kids, e- 10 kids, e- uh, kids each. And we, you know, took their academics, non-academics, extracurricular, SOP writing and stuff. And apart from that, sorry to go for so long. And apart from that, I was also part of Kitab Club. So as a part of it, I used to go to like distant remote villages in Uttarakhand and UP and all uh, mountainous regions. And for 15 days, we stayed there in the government colleges, taught the kids there, impo- okay. you know, imparted the education, importance of education. So yeah, this is my background stuff before applying to Columbia. Yep. So uh, let's move on to the test scores. Uh, which mm-hmm. tests did you give and what were your uh, scores in them? Yeah, definitely. I gave two tests, GRE and uh, TOEFL. Uh, my GRE score was 329 on 340 and my AWA was too poor. Uh, it was 4. I mean, not too poor, but it was very basic, 4. Uh, verbal was 162, Quant was 167. And I mean, 329 was enough. If I mean, if the viewers are uh, watching, 329 is a good enough score to fetch you uh, admission in, in I mean, most of the colleges you apply to. For your master's applications, did you also uh, enroll for any counseling services, coaching classes of that sort? Okay, okay, okay. So, like, I did apply for counseling services. And if I could rewind back time, I wouldn't. Because, yeah, I mean, this is my very strong suggestion, counseling services. Because... Okay, when you're starting out, when you are, you know, you don't know stuff, you are just, you're applying for the first time, you are just exposed to these plethora of colleges and stuff, you don't know stuff. So, when things come onto your plate, through a counsellor is good. But in my opinion, I've realized, through my experiences, through my friends' experiences, it does as much harm as it does good, or maybe more harm. I'll tell you why. Because uh, one of the main things what counsellor does for you, is it gives you a list of colleges that you can apply to. You know, it will give you platinum and then silver, right. or gold and silver, or, you know, backup colleges. Mm-hmm. I personally feel it's not the best way to do because in this case, what happens is counselor gives you a list of colleges and that you and then you apply to it. The best way to figure out if you want to go to a particular college is use yourself researching. If you like these colleges, talking to the professors there, talking to the alumni there, mm-hmm. it's the best thing. I mean, again, sorry for going so long, but this is very important point, which I feel yeah. should be going to the masters. And one very, I mean, a lot of people in, I mean, at least in my uh, circle and in your viewer base also don't know about the this thing that exists. It's called information interview. What inter- information interview basically is, suppose 
you like any col- you like columbia department of economics okay mm-hmm. what you do is you went through the course curriculum oh this is good then what you can do is you can write to the admissions office and asking them if you can schedule an information interview and most of the us colleges have this option where they will assign a person from the department who will speak with you answer all your questions it will they'll take 30 minutes 45 minutes how much ever time you want and do not apply to a college unless you're definitely sure that you want to go there otherwise it's based of money and resources time mm-hmm. so this information interview is very useful and that is how you should select your colleges uh if you want to apply to this or that or not and for gre i took jambori i was very happy with the i took jambori in new delhi and i was very happy with the kind of coaching they provided uh saturday sunday i used to go and the resources were great as well so yeah that's it okay so manan moving on Uh, are there any uh, so let us move on to your application process now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, are there any specific lor or sop tips which you would like to share with our viewers um okay sure uh, let me begin with sop this is okay i'll give you my personal opinion this is how i did and how i suggested my juniors to do it to mere hisab se if you want to start with the sop suppose ki tumhara december mein deadline hai tum around september october shuru kar do because it's a long process and you know what the most important things people get stuck with is sop likhna hai but shuru kaise kare i mean how do they begin so in my opinion the best way to do it is just for few weeks take a diary and note down all the points as as minute as jitna tumhe kuch bhi yaad hai tumne agar 12th standard mein swimming competition you have won a swimming competition write it down just write down each and every point that can stand in your favor do that and then pick the college in hand pick your points then mark out the relevant points and then start building a story i think that is how you should start instead of just starting and jab tum first do teen char drafts banaoge grammar pe to bilkul focus mat karo tum paragraphs pe bhi focus mat karo you just write you just build a story in your mind then the build a story on your paper and then go for grammar because in the beginning if you get stuck on grammar there's a lot of time waste and you won't get a true story in my opinion so this is my uh, advice for sop my advice for lor letters of recommendation there is a very big confusion and again this is my opinion most people have this confusion should i take a lor from a good positioned person jaise ki director ho gaya kisi company ka ya to college ka principal ho gaya or take it from a teacher or a uh, suppose a consultant who is just above you or maybe two levels above you who is not having as much of a position but much more working experience with you in my opinion go for the second option go for anyone who will give you a good lor instead of going for someone who has a good position because good lors matter mm-hmm. then being unko pata nahi hai ki yahan ki company ka cpr ka agar main director se bhi likhwa tha na lor they wouldn't know who the director is or even who cpr is what cpr is mostly so go for a person who will write good lors for you instead of going for positions got it right perfect mm-hmm. perfect perfect uh moving on mm-hmm. uh could you give us a summary of your acceptances and rejects and uh, why did you end up choosing columbia okay apply for two or three colleges four colleges okay but only if you are sure that you want to go to that college even if that is the only college that gives you acceptance because it's of no use tum 6 7 10 da, colleges mein apply karoge and in the end you just going for the sake of going that's my it's of no use instead just up, i applied only for three colleges because i knew agar iske alawa mujhe kisi aur mein milta bhi hai so i'm not spending mm-hmm. lakhs and lakhs of rupees behind it i won't so apply to right. only those colleges which have value for you that was my first tip i mean unsolicited tip and in terms of summary of my acceptance and rejections uh, rejects i applied to cambridge uh, for mphil and i got a reject for mphil from cambridge but the admissions office suggested that suggested they said that indian students have to do a bridge year before going to cambridge so they told me to do the advanced diploma before i can get into mphil admission at cambridge and okay. that was not something i was willing to do because mera ba honors in economics in at 
in India was quite rigorous in itself. Second college I applied to was London School of Economics. I got admission there, unconditional. And third college was uh, Columbia, and yeah, I'm there. So those are the three colleges I applied to. Oh wow. Uh, moving on. Mm-hmm. Is your program uh, STEM designated, and yeah, how is. flexible is it in terms of opting for course modules outside of your major? Okay, definitely. So. First of all, it is STEM designated. It is termed as econometrics and quantitative economics. So I get the two or three year extension. I'm not very sure. Um, apart from that, in terms of flexibility, since it's a STEM designated program, so definitely they want you to do certain courses. Tabi tumhe STEM ka designation milega. So in terms of flexibility, they are not flexible in the sense ki you can substitute. any of the economics courses for something else you definitely have to do those but they are very flexible in the terms of what you want to do extra as in i can do anything i want i can do japanese i can do history i can do anthropology i can do anything i want and columbia has a lot of courses to offer and you can do anything like my roommate is doing japanese history just for the sake of it so okay. yeah So, so like basically, you also get credits for these courses, or yeah, you do. Oh, okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, do some schools have a location advantage? And in your respect, does Columbia uh, give you an an advantage being in New York? Uh, I would say maybe they do. Maybe they do because of course, if you're staying in a city, you would have the advantage of staying in a city. In terms of, I'll tell you what. I mean, I don't. I won't speak for all colleges because I don't know. But I'll speak for Columbia. Uh, yes, it does have a locational advantage. In this, it's very expensive to stay in uh, New York, so that's disadvantage. But uh, New York is kind of the financial hub, as in like a lot of financial offices, even tech these days, and consulting. So a lot of these offices are there here. So every week there's a website called Eventbrite. I don't know if you're aware of it, but on Eventbrite. There is a networking event posted every Saturday. Co, there is a networking event where you can go. It's mostly free, of course. You just have to go there if you want to buy a drink. You can buy it on your own expense. But uh, yeah, so these networking events have people from J.P. Morgan, people from Google, people from Bain McKinsey. They just come up. It's like a Friday evening networking event, or I'm uh, Friday, not Saturday. I'm sorry. So after work at on Friday, you just come there. You sit with people. You talk to people. Maybe share a drink with them. So that's how the locational advantage comes into play. So, uh, Manan, moving on, are there any uh, internships or teaching assistant, teacher, research assistants uh, available? So, what is the process like there, and what are the requirements that you need? Okay, 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 sure. Um, TARA positions, uh, at least in my, not only in my course and most courses, you cannot do it in the first semester because you are just getting accustomed to it. So you won't get any TARA positions. I mean, mostly you won't get any TARA positions in the first semester. But in the second semester, there are a lot. Again, at least in my course, because I I had like six TA openings, four RA openings in my department for the next semester, and that's only my department. You can also apply across department. You can apply to undergraduate departments, basically. So one of my friends is doing finance, like TAing a finance course for the undergraduate level. so there are opportunities and it's pretty good it i mean my college pays up above 5000 dollars or approximately 5000 dollars for the semesters semester and also waives off a certain small portion of your tuition fees so it's okay. good uh that's good to good. save some money yeah, right uh, definitely definitely uh <laughs> right. so uh Uh, what are the uh, steps of securing a job process, and if you are aware of the average sub base salary in your location that companies provide? Okay, uh, I won't be very flary about it. I won't. I'll just speak the truth. It is very difficult to get a job, if, especially if you are an international student, because because as per U.S. laws, I guess it's a U.S. laws, but every single position you apply to. even if it's an internship the question they ask is do you have the right to work in united states yeah you can say yes because you are worked as a student there you are on a f1 visa stem degree allows the second question is the deadlier one the second question is now if not now in the future 
will you require any sort of visa sponsorship in terms of f1 b sorry h1 b or j1 yeah. and that is the difficult part because i personally have seen it in the beginning i used to say yes because i'll need h1 b sponsorship because after my 3 years of stem i used to say yes none of the companies i applied to i got an interview call none then one of my seniors told me bunk it you just write that you won't need any h1 b assistance then then we can take it forward and as soon as i wrote no i don't want any h1 b support in all the applications i've started getting more interview calls so that's basically something which is difficult if you're an international student because they they are not very willing to sponsor h1 b visas and second most most important point is if you're doing a masters from united states if you're doing any masters unless it's very 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 tech oriented i mean this is what i've observed and heard from also people who are working at google if you're doing a masters you're big, you're neither a bachelor student and you're neither an mba student you are in the middle and most of the jobs are either bachelors open for bachelors or open for mba candidates at least in my domain unless it's very tech oriented role so mm-hmm. what happens is you are definitely not an mba student so you cannot get an mba job you are clubbed up with bachelors people the job of even after spending hundreds of thousands of dollars you get a job what a us bachelor student gets you okay. start from a bachelor's yeah. level so that is one thing which i feel is a disadvantage for anyone who is doing masters there but the growth trajectory is good so mm-hmm. i mean it balances it off but i would still be like i'll still like to tell people that it is difficult to jo- find a job there but 100% not impossible but you'll have to work very hard right 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 okay uh, okay so uh, moving on to our last question varun mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. what are the some of the relevant skills that one should build upon to get a decent job role in your domain okay definitely uh, i wouldn't say my domain specifically because like in economics after you doing economics your doors are very open like you can do anything you want to do investment banking consulting you can also go to tech companies to do non tech roles so your your options are open like a lot of options you have so i wouldn't say specifically my domain but this is what i've gathered the two big things today are tech and finance so either you specialize i mean you distinguish yourself in tech or you distinguish yourself in finance tech mein tum le lo coding le lo coding skills are very useful you, or you can also take uh, data softwares or you know you can see data sql or sas these are things matlab is very important so these are the things they value on the finance end if you know about fixed income if you know about portfolio management if you know about you know basics of valuation hedge funds so you can also go to vc venture capitalist firms and tell oh i know how to value this company i know this company is overvalued i can do the due diligence for you and get you the correct value or i i mean things that finance gives you so okay. these are two important things which i think everyone should know perfect okay yes so uh, with that we come to the end of the questions mm-hmm. we have thank you maran so it was great having you i'm sure our users would have a lot of valuable inputs from your end so thank you i i hope so i hope so and Thanks. you know just in case i mean if you don't if you guys don't mind you can share my linkedin profile in the this thing in case someone yes, yes, wants to reach that. out and someone wants to reach out i would be more than willing to you know help them out in case any any in any kind of guidance sure sure, sure. we'll be doing that in the description box below thank you so much thank for you. having me okay <clears throat> thank you thank you hey folks thank you for watching our video please like and share this video and subscribe to our youtube channel also guys please don't forget to mention your views in the comment section below and see you soon with our next video